Welcome back everybody. In today's video, we're going to go over how you can run large language models from your terminal using OLAMA. Before we begin with installation, I'm going to show you some of the models we have available. For our demonstration purposes today, we're going to be using something called Code Llama, which is of course the Llama model trained on code. And if we scroll down here, we can see that there are many different variants. So there are uh, number of parameter variants. So I recommend either the 13 billion and 34 billion if you can use them, if you have enough space. And for your edification, this memory is total system memory, not just memory on your GPU. So I'm running an RTX Titan with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, and I'm able to run the uh, 34 billion variant without any issues. There are also things like instruct uh, where you can get your censored language model. You can have a Python variant which I haven't downloaded yet and there's also one for code completion. So we have a number of different options that we can avail ourselves of using code llama by way of llama.ai. Installation is very straightforward. You just go to the download tab. Now, unfortunately, this does not work for Windows at the moment, only Mac OS and Linux. If you're on Windows, I recommend you move to a real operating system, preferably Linux. Nonetheless, all you have to do is copy the command and head over to the terminal and execute it. So all we have to do is copy and, or excuse me, just paste, and it's going to run to update the model. Now, I already have Olama on my system, so this is just a very brief update. It's just doing a diff, basically. It's not re-downloading the entire thing. Uh, once that is finished, we're going to be able to check out what models I have installed by doing Olama list. And right now I'm running pretty lean. I just have the latest version of Mistral, at least as of four days ago. That takes up 4.1 gigabytes on the hard drive, as well as requires uh, about that much RAM to run. Then I have the variant of Code Llama. You can see it only takes up 19 gigabytes. Um, so everything is relatively lean. I also have the code variants for the 13 billion and 34 billion code llama models. They also have functionality to create your own custom models where you can specify roles for your large language model. Uh, I've experimented with that a little bit. I won't cover it in this video, but it's something to be aware of. So if you didn't have a model, what you would do is say llama pull mistral latest and that would pull the model uh, or update it if you already have it. I already have all these so I don't want to pull them again as they're relatively large and it takes a while to do. So let's experiment with some of the basic prompts. We can just basically interact with the uh, model by saying Olama run code llama say 13b and then it spools it up and we can feed it a prompt here in a second. We can say please give me Python code for hello world and it will give you a rather succinct response. You can say please give me I don't know let's say Fortran code for hello world and it gives you something that looks plausibly like Fortran though if I'm being honest I don't know Fortran. Here's a blast from the past how about Pascal please give me Pascal code for hello world and that looks pretty much accurate. Pascal, if you don't know, was a language designed to teach students in the 80s and 90s when I was learning computer science uh, how to do computer science. It's a strongly typed, uh, highly structured language. Anyway, so we can do uh, a vast array of other things. Um, so if we tell it by, we, it'll end the prompt, the, the interactive uh, session with the with the model. And what's interesting is if we type NVIDIA as Hamai, we can see that Olama is still sitting on our GPU running in the background. So just keep that in mind. And I found that um, this is just anecdotal. I don't know if this is reality, but anecdotally, it seems like it keeps track of the context as long as this is uh, spooled up in memory, which does make sense. Um, but that's been my experience. Perhaps yours is different. You can also do things like Olama run code llama 13b and then pass in a prompt from the command line. Give me a Python code for hello world. Let's do something a little bit better before. Um, uh, checking if a number is even, something very simple. And of course it gives you accurate code. The function definition there is uh, nice and succinct. And it gives you some 
little explanation afterwards as well. So it's quite functional. We can do far more advanced things though. We can um, we can ask it to produce code based on function def, uh, function comments. So I'm going to type this in here. We'll say olama run code llama 13b oops b dash code and then we're going to pass in a python comment a python function to check if a number is even and let's see what it comes up with it takes a second to think about it and it gives you um, of the function definition as well as a couple of examples of expected output so in essence unit tests as well we can also ask it hey um, given a function name can you return the body of the function and we need a few different tags for that so we're going to say olama run code llama 13b dash code and then we have to pass in these tags sort of html style compute uh, we'll just say is even n and then suffix return result. So that's the final line mid and then close the argument there. <laughs> and it gives us uh, a to do implement this function. That's brilliant. Uh, let's try it again and see what it gives us. Okay, so it gives a little bit more uh, now, and this is kind of a limitation of these large language models, at least if you're not dealing with ChatGPT. These open source models sometimes give you stuff that isn't great, but you see that if you just ask it again, uh, it will return a more accurate response. I wonder what it does you know, if we try the 34 billion variant. Oops, control C, obviously not 33, we want 34. Let's try that. And this will take a little bit longer to run because it's a much larger model. And I'm watching my system resources and it doesn't spool up. Um, wow, that's interesting. So I don't... Interesting. It, it appears like... Yeah, it appears like the... If you're using this for simple tasks, it's relatively useful. So... Another thing we can do is ask it where the bug in the code is. We can do something more complex like the Fibonacci sequence. So I'm going to copy and paste my prompt from the notepad here because it's multi-line and it makes it much easier. But we're going to say where is the bug in this code and we're going to define a Fibonacci sequence uh, function. And I believe that the error here is uh, the if n is less than or equal to zero. And what's interesting is that it spits out stuff that I really wouldn't expect. It's It seems like it's leaking training data. I could be wrong, but it seems like it's doing something we don't necessarily want it to do. So perhaps this functionality needs some time to work itself out. Uh, obviously, uh, these models are a work in progress. They're very expensive to train. We run it again. It gives you some more stuff. And I think if we spent more time to read the output, it would probably give us a little bit more insight into what's going on. Nonetheless, there's one other thing I want to do. So let's take a look here. So I have a function that is even, uh, returning true or false. I guess I don't even need the bool there. I was just being super pedantic, but nonetheless, it's a function to determine if uh, a number is even or odd. So if you want to write uh, unit tests because you're a good programmer, you could use this sort of syntax. Let me copy and paste this from my handy dandy notepad. And what's important here is that we're inserting a bash command to cat example.py. So it takes in the text from example.py. So we do have the capability to run bash commands from within a prompt, which is very helpful. Other thing to note is that we are using the double quotation marks. It doesn't work if you don't do that. So when you run it, it will momentarily spit out a unit test. There it goes. And it covers a whole bunch of stuff. So um, it covers even negative numbers. This is great stuff. So 
you can see that it's really useful for writing unit tests, at least for simple functions. Not so helpful for finding bugs because it spits out a bunch of different stuff, but it can help you to write code and it can help you to get put uh, along the right path to solving a particular problem. This isn't meant to be uh, something you use on a daily basis. Rather, I'm hoping that a, this will be, raise awareness around Alama.ai because I find it incredibly useful to run models locally. Uh, and as, of course, as open source models get more and more powerful, Alama will get more and more useful as we get access to those models. But also, uh, that if you run out of internet, you know, if you're on a plane somewhere or your internet just happens to go down because infrastructure seems to be crumbling, at least here in the United States, then you have an option that isn't a chat GBT or... Uh, stack overflow in the old way. All that said, I hope that was useful for you. Now, I'm using this uh, to teach students how to create artificial intelligence applications because it's obviously free and open source, much cheaper than ChatGPT. You can actually embed this in a website and it works really well. Let me show you that in a moment. So here I'm running a Python uh, uh, Flask application in the background and we can go to the web browser and see what it looks like. So we're back in the browser. Let's open a new tab and go to the website. Now I show students how to create this in my new course on AI applications, link down below. Uh, but the basic idea is we can interact with the terminal, excuse me, the model from a web page. So please give me Python code for hello world. Press the send button and it delineates the response from the user, the query from the user, and the response from the model. And this does handle context uh, up to 4,096 tokens, which is the default for the model, uh, which is a little bit non-trivial, but nonetheless I show people how to do that in the course. If that's something that interests you, check the link down in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.